They've only dropped one map themselves, so both these squads are like near perfect, and I'm really excited to see what happens when we get to this uh, first uh, first to three going into the finals here. It's going to be insane. Yeah, this will be something nice. Oh, we're already getting right into it. Of course, this is where we get started. See both sides, just trying to clear up initial turf, set up that home base, and yeah. don't leave too much unchecked. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the initial turf war, right? This is map one turf yeah. war, Santa Fe's pick. This is going to be a lot about just who can manage to control the whole entire map a little bit better. You can see it, the subs do come out, so there are buy-in. There's that special, though. Ooh, doesn't catch anybody. Didn't get punished, too. That's a big, big thing. Mm, yeah, you want to make sure you actually capitalize on those punishes. There's a lot of opportunities to be had in a game of platoon. If you're, not able to, if you're not ready to jump on them, they're not going to be the difference between winning or losing a lot of turf here. Yeah, and you can see it. There's still a lot of contest. Finally, there's a couple picks, but on the side of the orange team, it will be there. Hero does finally manage to come up on that for Bentonville. So Bentonville looking poised to take a lot of ground here. Yeah, really, really clean so far. Once again, oh, we can see that roller coming in clutch. For the Dino? I'm not sure. I mean, it's a good, there. it's a good strong backliner right now. It really does a lot. Mm. Mines can put in some work, and when you're looking at that, there's that triple ink strike coming out. Will eventually Ooh. try to buy some one. Yeah, didn't quite get that pick there, but two on the side of Bentonville are down, and there's the third. So, yeah, Santa Fe is looking to take this up and uh, forward, coming in huge on that pick. Yeah, very nice so far. Once again, you can see our team in danger now as they've lost that mid control. It's gonna be a hard road to fight it back. You have the sniper on deck, so they could get some really clean picks here, but. You see, really effectively, blue team tries to stay under the ink, not get picked off free. Gotta keep it safe. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing though, right? Is this this really isn't gonna, it hasn't got a lot of value, but the ink Zuka looking to find anybody didn't really. Uh, you can see it, Bentonville's really just keeping themselves uh, just controlled up this mid, and the sniper hasn't really found value. Just constantly been checked. The triple ink strike, too. All those ultimates just thrown in to get Ooh. back, and SFS is just really trying their best to get uh, their sides down here. I'm sorry, that is, yeah, that's Bentonville. Yeah, SFS, of course, looking to really try and fight through it here. They're jumping from the sides. What sides you say? Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I'm, I'm checking it out. I'm checking it out. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I mean, but like you can see it. This has been back and forth on both sides. And just you can see between the paint being put down on it, like mm. the ultimates just continue to come. Ink Sensor does find one and does manage to get him cornered. The 2v1 is there. <laughs> they just will get that pick. Yeah, but they trade out there. So there's a one. The reinforcements are there. And it's still... Pretty unclear. Bentonville finally does seem to have it. But, oh, the punishment does come in, and SFS will go down forward again, coming at the big. Reef Slider in, doesn't find it, finally gets punished. That's what I was expecting to see there. <laughs> yeah. And we, we do have the new team names actually swapped, so we will get those swapped over for you in just a moment here. Bentonville on the orange, SFS on the blue. The fling. Oh. No. Look Which at ruler that. is that? Wow. Ah, <laughs> uh, there it is. It is coming up blue, though. And I mean, yeah, mm. considering how back and forth that was and considering we didn't see, we didn't actually see any crab tanks. That's kind of what I was expecting, given uh, the way this kind of meta has gone. It was a little bit there. Yeah, you can see our blue team there came up pretty big on that. So that will be one point to our Santa Fe South squad. Uh, mm. Yeah, I mean, looked looked yeah. really good there. It was really tough. It was a really back and forth uh, set. But Santa Fe really showed that they were able to kind of win those fights and kind of clutch up when mm. they needed to. So all things considered, Santa Fe, you know, uh, dealing Bentonville their first loss in this playoff run, that's already a big deal, and that does strike good. So with that in mind, we're going to Rainmaker, and now it's going to be Bentonville's pick. Uh, I mean, without knowing much of anything about these teams, which unfortunately I don't have that much information, it's going to be hard mm. to say where they want to go. But I do love Rainmaker. It's a fun, and I, it's a fun mode that really does require the whole team to work together, right? Yeah, Rainmaker has been a mode that has kind of been a little bit controversial every now and then, but I do love to see it every every uh, once in a while because, I mean, hey, Rainmaker brings some good entertaining new styles into light, and I do want to hear your opinions on just what you think really defines a solid Rainmaker loadout for a team. Yeah, and this is kind of one of those ones, those modes where it's really tough to... Uh, really like get yourself planted for a backliner. Mm. So it's very likely we're going to see those snipers kind of go away. It's very likely we're going to see maybe that dynamo might stick around, but those kinds of uh, <laughs> backliner steady hold space uh, weapons are probably going to do any good. I do mm. also kind of expect to see, I, we did see a player on Bentonville named Brush. If we don't see some sort of an ink brush or an octobrush, I'd actually be kind of shocked. Like <laughs> yeah. that's just, you want to talk about taking an aggressive play. That's the best way to do it. And if Brush does mm. not continue to live up to his name, I, I'd kind of be a little disappointed in Bentonville, honestly. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, hey, brush and ink brushes in general, I mean, they're such a great offensive tool, especially in a mode yeah. like Rainmaker where you need that speed, you need that coverage, you need that territory scouting and control to be able to just run wherever you need to and be at the right place at the right time. So, I mean, hey, I would not count out a brush play anytime soon. I can't imagine the roller coming back potentially, but when it comes down to it, it's looking like it might be a bit of a toss-up yeah. between whatever could really work out here because it's going to be a bit of a freestyle trying to figure out what's the best option here in the Rainmaker. Yeah, and given that we've we're kind of sitting in a meta that's in an odd position right now, mm. I do expect to maybe see a little bit more sloshing machine come out, a little bit more booyah bomb because we did see one, uh, but mm. there really is a lot of value that can be had just being able to buy the space around the rainmaker does a lot of far. Uh, we are waiting on Bentonville's pick for the map, so uh, we're just just give us a few minutes while they they crunch the numbers and decide that because I have to say also on this Bentonville squad. It's been four players the whole way through the season, and to get this far without having any subs, without having to worry about anything, mm. that's really good for a, a for, like just a four stack, like a very solid team. That's a very solid core going into future games, too. Yeah, being able to not only run through a bracket with just your three main players, or four main players, but on top of that, not having backup subs to really yeah. support that amount of play. I mean, this is a whole bracket they've been through. It's not like yeah. it's going to be just a couple matches and you're done. Like, this has been a long yeah. time coming, and their career is only going to get more intense. But as we're here now, there's some good stuff we're seeing from the side of, of course, Bentonville. Yeah, and I agree with you on that because the, this flexibility is there. But on mm. the other side, since we had a little time to look at it, Santa Fe South had two full teams. Let me put that out there. They yeah. had two full squads. They had a whole practice squad me up I, I say we had a full practice squad there so i mean they were <laughs> there we go it looks like we are ready to go in yeah and let's see where we ended up it looks like we ended up in I th oh we ended up in this classic map okay Ooh. uh all right, so we'll see, William, just looking those weapons over. We do see the sniper come back, so I'm very interested to uh. see where that positioning holds there. Most likely it's a comfort pick, I'd say, at this point. Has to be. I never have any shame to comfort pick either. I think, above all else, if you're able to hit your shots and make it effective, it's better than trying something that you won't be able to hit your shots with. It is, and you can see the sniper in the background just trying to buy a little bit more space. The Rainmaker is in control, and I like this high ground take. That's a very, very strong mm. positioning. They will fall there, but and get eventually pissed out. Milky eventually managing the dodge roll will just hide to get out of the way. Uh, but <laughs> that's two down, so it's it's really still kind cool. of anybody's game here. You can see, of course, that Booyah Bomb ready to go. Going for the Dunkaroo. Controlling so much space, it allows so much coverage and so much like easy control of an area, trying to make that Rainmaker as simple as he can to really get a hold of, but of course, Ooh, two orange down. team going down. The two down on that orange team side, that's a big spot. That's time to go forward there, uh, but the ultimates are up, so we'll see if they want to commit them into this, because you can see it, the sniper is trying to find just an angle to maybe buy some space, and no, there will go one down, uh, but didn't really find any picks, and uh, I mean, there's the crab tank I was expecting this whole time through. There it is, now we yeah. see the crabs roll out. That's what I was looking for. And such an amazing tool for not only for space coverage, but also for hearing about and just seeing how it works in action, it looks pretty pretty daunting to try and go oh, against. Yeah. Our brush takes a fall there, immediately gets traded back though. So again, this Rainmakers continue to move and both these teams being playing very, very quiet on the mid here. The triple ink strike is out and finally we'll see our orange squad start to move this up. So eventually that will get put to a halt, but the lead is there. It's it's still pretty open. Like 80, 80 is not anything. Froward falling to that. It's okay. I've been there. I've been there. We've done that. We've all done that. <laughs> We've all done that. That's that's no shame. No shame there. Very nice clear out there. You can see SFS is getting torn through by Bentonville here on the blue side. Taking care of that Rainmaker. Trying to carry it all the way over. Of course, Missile's on the ready. You can see just one chance tear it right through, but the amount of util coming through on the side of SFS is so brutal. They stood, they lived that, wow. Did Some manage to put a Yeah, there we go. Bentonville in the orange, you can see them, yeah, need to put a stop there. And that's about where I expect it to be. They're going to commit the Booyah Bomb. I don't know. I, I, you're not, you kind of had the numbers. You didn't really buy much space with it, so uh, might want to refund on that down the line. Yeah, I mean, oh. you can get the value as much as possible, but hopefully can it's kind of a chance to at least to earn that back. That's a reset All right. as well. Interesting. Interesting reset. It wasn't that far out of position, but I guess that's so. So going in with this only Booyah Bomb, this is the only ult. Got to find some value. The two down, though, makes this incredibly hard for Santa Fe. 
Ooh, almost fall off the map there, but we're hanging in there, no problem, no problem. Nice mark there, called out hero, but still yeah. builds down to it. Uh, this is my fear, though. There's no, there's no push forward for this team that has such a mid to front range. No one's really taking the initiative, and Brush did catch an angle. They will manage to get. That's kind of the odd one. Usually, you don't play to that, so they did get through the checkpoint, and that's that's as good as a win in some cases with a minute and a half here. Mm. I mean, it's crazy to see just how much can happen in just a minute and a half, and there's not there's actually a, quite a lot of time for a game like Splatoon where you can get really explosive really fast. There it is. There's that pick on Brush. Uh, we'll eventually keep it there, but yeah. I mean, they just need to take this back for the side of San Santa Fe, so they will get Rainmaker. But the question is, is did anybody take the space to really keep it moving back in their favor? Hmm. I mean, like, I we're trying to see that now. Get the high, high ground control, and there oh, comes the grab. Oh, that. There's, that's huge. Look at the space that takes up, too. Yeah. It's just massive. Ooh. You see, I suppose there's lots of Rainmaker now. Open for the chance. They're taking that lead just barely. And the Reef Slider will commit to try to contest that. No, does get the control. We'll push that back. And the Rainmaker is there. They'll finally bring it through, but it's not going to be enough. They still need to keep pushing for Bentonville. Triple Ink Strike does go off in the background. Doesn't find anybody, but they still have to push a little bit further. 30 seconds on the clock probably leaves them a good push or two left, so they have to make this count. Mm. On top of it all off, I mean, with only 20 seconds left, you don't have a lot of ult on deck. SFS has two to popping right now. Ooh. Hopefully can lead to something, but not to too much yet. They've already got the lead, gonna try to extend it a bit more. And there it is. There will be that that ink just to try to buy the space. Yeah, they know they don't need to push any further. The lead has been led by by our friends over on Bentonville, but the, I mean it's overtime now, so they cannot afford to drop this. They need to keep this push alive here. Oh, yeah. They don't have any tools, but they also don't have anybody taking space right now. Last chance for Bentonville here. You've gotta have the teammates ready to go on that space control. I want to make that chance for you guys to actually create this comeback because right now, oh. even overtime time is draining. And there it is. That was tough, though. That was really, both those teams never gave up any bit of space. That was a really, mm. really tough match. Both of those teams really uh, fought tooth and nail and really refused to. The only thing that concerns me going into this was that neither team also really recognized when they had the advantage, though, right? Mm. You could see uh, just kind of keeping an eye on things is that you know there would be moments where, two, where a team would go down two or you'd have the advantage and the Rainmaker could get picked up, but no one really moved with it. No one really took the initiative to go forward. And I mean, Suplex, that's kind of a thing going into, especially later, if it gets, if we get into Tower and Clams, that's going to be so important is being able to take that space and control it. Especially going back into round three here on Splat Zones, it's so important to be able to not just hold the space you've got, but be able to take the space and then continue to press that advantage. Yeah, it's really, really impressive to see just how much offensive potential these teams have, but they've got to use and find the yeah. way to really make it optimal. I mean, being able to not only have that lead, but make sure to extend it at the same time, to have your teammates have those comms ready to go, to clear that space, and watch over your Rainmaker controller is really going to be important if you're trying to play a game mode like this. But right now, next up is going to be Splat Zones, and we're going to see how they play that zone, because at this point in time, it won't be as much about pushing, but just holding it down. We might see the return of more snipers, like you mentioned. Let's see the return of more space control backliners. We'll have to see how this shakes out, but of course, like you mentioned, it's going to be really, really important to really try to capitalize on those offensive chances and make them go the distance. Yeah, you you nailed it there because that's going to be the bigger part of all this. Like everybody plays splat zones. Everybody loves splat mm. zones. This is arguably like everybody's favorite mode when it comes to this game. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so like, th let's talk about how like both of these teams have probably you know undefeated on this going to this point. So this is going to be especially mm. tougher. I do have to give a little bit more of an edge to uh, to our team bringing in the snipers though. I'm not sold mm. on Inkvac as an ultimate. I'm actually kind of shocked we're not playing the E-leader here, considering just the mm. availability that it gives you just to find your opponents and lead help in a team. Uh, but I do think that there's a little bit of an edge to that just by saying, like, look, I have the entire view of the zone in front of me. You're not going to be able to touch it. Just try and come in and make sure and just just get picked. That's all it's going to come down to. Is just <laughs> You have to come in, and if you're going to, I hope you've got a wall because you're just going to get picked otherwise. Oh yeah, that util can be such a huge game changer for matchups oh, yeah. like this. And in splat zones, I mean, that wall can be super important. The crab drone can be super important. Okay. There's so much you can actually try and need to work with. Even I can even imagine a bubbler coming into play. Oh, bubbler's huge here. Like bubbler is yeah. so important. But uh, so we're on Mako for first flames. We're on Mako Mart. 
Yeah, bubblers could be huge there. Like, imagine mm. just it covers most of the zone. If you can oh, even yeah. get it over that middle part, <laughs> you've just basically bought most of your space. So this is exactly where I want to see uh, backliners coming in because you just have mm. so much space. Uh, especially if you can get control of those kinds of offset uh, middle grounds, you just have free sight lines of your opponent's spawn. So uh, really, getting control of those high grounds is going to be important going into Mako here. Yeah, high ground could be a really important thing. I mean, of course, it is Splatoon. For those who may not play it as much, the ink will always fall at a gravity fall, so it won't always be full range. You don't have you don't have rifles, you don't have snipers that are nah. going to be full range. Even the snipers in this game won't be reaching across the map in nah. any means. Even nah. the E leader is not going to be nah. reaching across the map. It has a lot of distance. That's a fact. But it does. It does. It's got a lot of distance, but mm -hmm. there's still ways to play around it. You know, you've still got your ninja squid. You've still got a lot of tools to get around it, and especially if you can just launch a torpedo at them. Oh, uh, we're seeing an explosher come out, though. That's an Ooh. interesting one. We do see the snipers come out on one side. Explosher is an interesting one. That will give you just about as much uh, sights, really, as anything else, and it's got a bit of range, but you do see the juniors, which have that bubbler you were talking about. So, uh, really, just being able to kind of hold this space is what both these teams really want to do, it seems. Yeah. Ooh, and a rainmaker as well. Not a rainmaker, but uh, sorry, I forgot the name for, for the rain. <laughs> uh, the ink cloud. Ink cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Now that one can also be extremely influential in matchups oh, like this in spot zones. It creates so much space and creates such an advantageous offensive push for your team to be able to just go ahead and take some space. Really win those fights much more easily than, easily than you would be able to normally. Yeah, that will be back at the control and they'll continue to take down. They're looking to kind of get in positions, but they're not they're not able to take this high ground here. So with that ticking down, they're looking to close this out and it's getting to the point where it's gonna be hard to take back. Fiddy will go down though, and that's gonna be the start of that. There's control, and I assume Bubbler is gonna come out and keep that position too. Uh, finally, the clock will tick down on the other side. Yeah, you can see, of course, trying to fight back for that lead. And I've forgotten exactly how it works again, but could you explain the, uh, the plus? Numbers yeah, of course. On the uh, slot zones here. Yeah, of course. So the plus side is a is a penalty basically that says uh, for every second you've had it, there's an uh, there's a mount added that basically means you have to burn through this extra clock to make sure you just can't run away with it and that the other team has a chance to come out. And speaking of run away, they are going to get out of there. <laughs> Snipers is going to reposition, get out of there. Uh, but yeah, so every single one of those plus signs just gives you a little bit more time, and you can see it. Uh, the Bentonville squad with those changes coming in, they've been managed to tick away that penalty, so they'll continue to tick it down, and with little they're getting close to that 50% mark and that's where you can start to lock this out that's that spider scope mm. just really not getting any value a little too far back to find anybody yeah i mean it's been looking absolutely interesting. it's hard to keep up with the team names because the, the colors keep swapping on the top <laughs> yeah. over and over in spectator <laughs> mode and i'm like trying not to call out which side's which but um i do believe we have uh ventricle on the green side here yeah. and sfs on the pink I try uh, to like, read the names as the yeah. goes on. It's so tough in a game like this. Yeah, but... Ben... <laughs> go, go on, ben... go on. No, yeah, Benville's, Benville's again holding this down very, very well. You can see them kind of applying their ultimates, just kind of staggering them a little bit, just enough to buy them space, try to be, buy more information going to it. Yeah, the second one ends, they put off the bubbler, they drop the next one, and Hero just trying to find an angle, uh, any sort of thing with a sub to really get anything. Oh, this is a great shot. Where it is. Is the find one? Hey. No! Didn't get anything. That's tragic. The hero as well, going to push up with the side of Bill, clearing up on space, of course, trying to take back that spot zone. We need the start to take, take care of that penalty as effectively as possible to try to fight it back. Of course, I suppose delaying that time just a little bit means so much to them. And oh, yeah. Got that lead. I mean, and I mean, Santa Fe just really needs to buy the time at this point. If they can continue to kind of stall this into a mid, uh, it's the clock's still going. But the more they can stall this and keep it into like a middle unchecked ground, they're in a position to do that. Fiddy will fall there. There's the reef slider. Will it finally get one? No, it doesn't. Still continues to go and punish. Gets out. There is the punish for it. Such a tough ult to get value with. Yeah, I mean, there's so much you can try and do, but. There's a lot of options, not only for the side of Bentonville, but also for SMS Platoon Squad to really make sure they can close out this lead because right now, this is their chance. Just 18 yeah. points left, yeah. and they've already lost control. Uh, there's the important flip, though, yeah. As, uh, but, it, I mean, this is where it's at, though. They've got it, and there's still a penalty to deal with, so minute and a half left. Uh, I mean, it's still not impossible that that penalty uh, number is going down, but the question is, is can they burn it down? Fiddy again falling. We've seen that name in the kill feeds just so much. Unfortunately, it's needs to play a little bit safer. Whew. And of course, as well, like, while you do have the penalty, it does not count towards the end game. So if time runs yeah. out, you're still in the lead. Yeah. That penalty will not matter. As long as you have that lead, you have that lead. It's all good. 
Yeah. It's so this clock is, it, I guess. It's, it's getting closer, though. I mean, mm. you can see it there. Bentonville is finally in control. They're out of penalty. They're looking to flip this. There's still time. They are going to flip this short of something big coming up here in this last minute. Yeah, this is huge. And they've got the lead now. There it is. A, here we go. Bentonville, yeah. I mean, this is looking absolutely fantastic for them. Just a little nudge ahead, and that penalty is going to be huge because that penalty is going to be rocked down a lot of the remaining time. Yeah, and that's a only lot. only 30 seconds left. There's not much you can do. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, Santa Fe just really needs to get control of this. They want to win this. They can shut out the finals right here and close this if they can maintain control. But that is a big ask for them. And now that the roller's in position, it might get a little easier. Oh, the splat, Ooh. though. Yeah, very nice beside of Bentonville. Retaking that control. Gonna work down their own penalty and hold that lead. You can't let SFS even have an inch in this kind of head-to-head. -head. It is terrifying on spot zones, but it's looking like it might be on the side of Bentonville for this one. Ooh, great sub there. Almost catches out the Explosher. Seven seconds left. As long as this maintains in the neutral, it can still fall to anybody. So uh, given this, there it is. Yeah, Bentonville keeps themselves alive. Great, great turnaround from them. Whew. Yeah, take a breather there. Wipe the sweat off your yeah. brow. Yeah, that, that, was, that was close. <laughs> that was close. That, that, was yeah. a, that was almost a 3 0. And that's. Come on, we can't have the finals go down like that. That's nah. not. That's not. No, we can't have that. We got to at least see four. <laughs> and thankfully, now we are to four. So now we're back at Tower. We're going to uh, see Santa Fe's Ooh. pick going into this. So, uh, you know, again, they just want to close the door. They just want to put this to bed. Mm. It's It's been a tough one. And Splat Zones just kind of didn't work in their favor. I think those weapon changes that they saw really didn't play in their favor mm. i think that was a lot of it was some of those things that just kept them on their toes and that's probably what got bentonville a, really a lot of the ways here is that flexibility we we're talking about just a four stack of players that have played together all season no subs uh that kind of team play and that understanding of look if we need to kind of get more information let me pick up this weapon if we need more pick potential or we need more paint we can swap that's so important and that's what gets a number nine seed through this huge run past mm. three upsets to a finals yeah, and it's incredible to see just how much flexibility and creativity these teams have to really try and drive this home. Now, it's one side to try and to try and really make a new loadout work for a team to try and see if they can really get the optimal loadout for a game mode like Splat Zones. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, if you're not comfortable with it, might as well not rock it in the first place. As we get yeah. over to tower control, it's going to be a lot more hectic, a lot more aggressive. That tower is so, so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, and and the problem is is that a lot of the tactics that gotten that got these teams so far in a lot of ways won't necessarily uh, carry in a lot of ways. You know, the big bubbler mm -hmm. does lose a bit of carry. For those who don't know, it loses a bit of time and energy if you plant it directly onto that. So the juniors might fall off in popularity here. You can't necessarily buy the space on it itself. Uh, given that, I mean, it's it's been very tough. So I really want to see Bentonville kind of continue to to throw some more curveballs out there because right now Santa Fe has been uh, finding success with those picks that have been very successful for them. They've been kind of playing what they've been comfortable with and uh, Bentonville really needs to keep themselves alive because again, it's a match point. Like, this is it. They yeah. need to keep this going around. They need to bring it to five to even give themselves this. The reverse sweep has to come now. Yeah, reverse sweep now or never at this point. And on top of that, SFS, I'm sure, don't want that to happen because, I mean, hey, Spoiler alert, but our game five is looking like clam blitz. <laughs> and, yeah. and I don't think they want to go there. <laughs> None of the, no one wants to play that. I'm the only one here that wants to that wants to see this. No one else in that lobby wants to see them go to clams except for me. Uh, it will be Inkblot Towers though, and, mm. and that's that's pretty reasonable. I think it's no, you know, I don't think there's any sort of map that was really necessarily terrible aside from Mahi, which. Uh, find a good mode for Mahi, impossible challenge. But <laughs> yeah, like like that's pretty fair. I think that's that's mm. still a reasonable pick. And given that uh, that's Santa Fe's pick, it's going to be very. It's going to be. It's like these are all lining up in their favor. Like they have the map pick. They're coming off a loss, but they only need one more to close it out. So mm. uh, this looks like they are in a position to close this out. And given that as they came in from the three seed, you know they should on paper be pretty good uh, looking win here, but I got to shout it out. Uh, you know, Fiddy, I've constantly seen her in the kill feed, and I we got to pull it back here. I love the aggression that she's been showing, uh, but the problem is, is like you didn't get punished for it, so I really want to see her make sure she clears those picks and then continue to get out, because you can't afford to count that your teammates are going to trade you. Yeah, on top of that, like, where is Brush's brush? That's all I got to say. I mean, <laughs> at this point in time, <laughs> how you name where is brush that brush at? Yeah. Yeah, how you name yourself Brush? Come on, man. <laughs> 
Look, I, like maybe they're mm. saving it for clams. That's like a known strat, especially. Oh, yeah. When, yeah. Like that's like a known entity in clams. So maybe we'll see that there, but mm. we have to get to there first. So yeah, uh, you it's know, a long that could be the, yeah, there's still one more. Yeah, there's still, there's still like five minutes of gameplay before we even get to that. And hopefully mm. that happens. Uh, so fingers crossed we do get there because I want to see that. But yeah, like going into going into uh, tower, I, I do. I'm, I am very curious to see where we go on this, simply because we haven't seen a lot. We are still keeping the junior, which is interesting to me. Mm. Uh, and it looks like we're bringing in. Okay, uh, this is pretty box standard for what both of these teams have been playing. Uh, so a little bit, I, I like. It's going to be difficult to see what what value this backliner gets as we are back on Inkblot. We saw this back on back in Turf War also. So uh, these teams are familiar with this map. This is going to be this is a crucial point. Ooh, great yeah. pick. It's also a great spot to be in. I can see SFS really focusing on that close range game with their load out there. Really swapping towards a pretty much close range only build. As yeah. you can see, Benton build going for that sniper. Really be able to put in some work there. As you can see, Brush putting in some really great stuff with a splatter shot. And now to put on the pressure. Yeah, but there's picks. There's there's still there's still enemies around. So flying fish will eventually clean that up, and the tower won't move too much. So, but again, this is what we we're talking about, right? The 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 kind of ability to recognize when you have picks down and you have the ability to move the cart uh, is so important. That booyah bomb is gonna be equally important now that they're four on cart. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, tower is such a terrifying mode to be in because anything could happen on that thing. It is so aggressive. You're getting wailed with util the entire time. <laughs> what the reef slider gets one? <laughs> what? Why would you? That's a powerful commit. I respect that, but we do see the side of SFM go down. Three down is a scary place to be, also. So, uh, I mean, look, sometimes when you need to make the picks, you need to make the picks, and I respect mm. that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you might as well go all in at this point. Tower yeah. control is the kind of game mode where you can just go all out aggression. I mean, there's no hold bar in a ring match like this. Yeah. I mean, it's still, that's the other part of this, right? We haven't seen that aggression. It's been hold at mid, and 62% is still very, very achievable. Checkpoint one there is open. There's a Booyah Bomb to match it in addition to that bubble. Uh, it'll eventually get back the other way, and SFS will keep this, uh, keep their dream alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want to let the lead get too big, of course. Right, Bill is trying to make sure they can at least start clapping back here. They start to move that tower back over. We at least try to counterplay that tower with Mac over to see right now. SFS carrying it over Inkvac? to extend that lead. Stuck at okay. the same point once there again. There it is. There it is. That Inkvac actually came in huge. The Trizuka also coming in big there. Those ultimates both getting spent were so powerful and so got value, but uh, they're still not over. They still haven't been able to stop this cart. Forward falls. They're just to give it out, and the Reef Slider is up, but there's no targets to throw this at. So now that it is rolling back the other way, uh, it, it's got to be so tough. Benville is fighting tooth and nail to keep themselves alive in this, and they just need to get a couple picks and, and just acknowledge when they've got the advantage. That sniper has been kind of just sitting in the back, not really finding much value, it seems. So I really want to see them step forward and take some space and, and try to keep their team the space and safety to hold. Yeah, I mean, if we can get the sniper in the middle point, high tower like there we're seeing is. right now. There it is. The That's shot. what I wanted. Really That's it, yes. Picks. That's what we were looking for, because that gives you it. It's going to be hard to control that versus the crab. They'll throw out the ink back just to negate that, and that's a good defensive use of that ultimate. They have to continue to hold here. Will they get to this point, though, because they need to keep this push six more seconds? No! Huge opportunity here for Bentonville, but they need to at least close the deal. A little bit further, you got the lead, and you got there it. it is! You got it. That's huge. Now they can just sit and play defense, and Bentonville can keep their reverse seat dreams alive. But the rest of the team needs to come through, and the Sniper is in position in mid, so they need to see some value out of that as they start to rotate in. You can see really, really, it may only be two points, but that actual defense from Bentonville here at this choke point is so, so solid. I'd be surprised oh. to see SFL can tear through this, but the Booyah Bomb is going to come in clutch, hopefully open up some space, but the lead is not really taking quite yet, and there it is again! Bentonville no. shutting them down. Oh no, wait, what? No, they didn't get it. No, that's, it's going back to Benton, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, shutdown they... once more. Their defense is no, so they're not... solid. Ah! No, they're going to give it up. Stop that! They need to keep this going. <laughs> the, everything is committed and thrown in, and it's finally with one to spare. Oh, they goodness. just get control of it. That is absolutely the clutch. It cost them everything, and there's nothing. There's no one left standing. That's the last one in the wipeout. That is tragic wow. suplex. That means that Bentonville has the chance to keep this in their control. They're just going to play it to mid and control the space. That's probably the smartest move they can make here with less than a minute on the clock. Absolutely incredible plays. I mean, to be able to hold them back from getting that one extra tick means everything in this matchup right now with 40 seconds left. I mean, it's getting intense. And on top of that, Bentonville 
want to try to emphasize and actually expand that lead a little bit if you can, because yeah. one bad move, this could be an SFS steal. Oh, Booyah Bomb comes in, needs to find value with it. Nothing there for, for there, so SFS will have to keep looking. They do have cart control, but they need to keep this alive, because this is probably the last chance. Toasty falls there, and that's going to make this even harder. The rest of SFS falls, though. This is their chance to capitalize, Suplex. They will! Yeah, a huge chance to grab taking the lead. It may only again be by two, but that two points is going to mean everything in this matchup. And unless Bentonville can get a full run right to the end of the goal, this is going to be oh, a rough one. They're down three, though. Bentonville has the chance. They can keep themselves alive here. They have members on cart and no ultimates. And again, SFS just won. They didn't, they just nearly avoided out. This is the space we wanted to see them take. They need to make this happen with the one ult that they have online to get that utility in oh, there. No! The dive from SFS taking out so much of Bentonville, oh! and that's going to be a wrap. <sighs> so close for Bentonville. They really almost had that. That was that was to the wire. That was a great, great way to close out this finals, and it's mm. just a shame. It's a shame we didn't get, uh, get, get clams because it probably would have been equally as close, but... I mean, hey, uh, shout out to Santa Fe because they really, they really played oh, yeah. that well. They really Honestly. just played that well. I am somewhat of an enjoyer of clams. I do yeah. love dunking in some clams every now and then, but to a, for a game five situation, I could not imagine a more terrifying nah. game mode than having to play clams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not when the stress is on, but unfortunately mm. for us, unfortunately for us clam enjoyers, we won't get to see it. But mm. fortunately, we have crowned a winner here in the Splatoon 3 Central. So uh, congratulations to SFS High School. Uh, you know, a great, great set from them and from Bentonville also. And Bentonville, again, they had a great run. I would be very excited to see where this Bentonville squad ends up next year, given that they pushed that uh, so far. Those three upsets, they hadn't dropped a map in playoffs. It's, it's almost a shame to see their Cinderella run kind of end like this. Yeah. So I really do want to see where they end up next year. You have really beautiful talent from the center region here. I mean, yeah. you can't ask for better games in Splatoon 3 than that. It was absolutely a pleasure to watch. And of course, thanks again to the players. Congratulations again to Santa Fe South High School, the SFS Platoon Squad, for putting such an amazing work. And of course, thanks so much for Bentonville, Bentonville Opposition for putting in an amazing effort. I mean, of course, for each player, it was just head to head, neck oh, yeah. and neck. But for here we are now, congratulations and That'll be about it for us. I mean, you can find me on Twitter, so Twitch, whatever, whatever you'd like. So, yep. where can we find you, though? I mean, it's exactly that same amount of weird words right below me. So, Danum, you can find me there pretty much anywhere, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, if you enjoy other shooters, I'm I'm around for that. So, uh, hopefully, I get to see some more Splatoon 3 from the high school brand, because this is when some quality matches, and I can't wait to see what happens in the next year for these young kids and see them grow. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, truly, you love to see some good competition like this, but that's a wrap for now. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in. This has been the Play vs. Fall 2022 High School Championship featuring Splatoon 3 with the Central Region, and y'all, take care. Take care.